going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the huddle. Brought to you by BetUS TV. We got a special show today. We had crazy breaking news in the AFC East this morning. You know the news by now. It broke around 11 a.m. EST. It's now 3 p.m. EST as we're live here on BetUS TV. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Fridays. At 3 p.m. EST, my name is Richie. We got Mr. TD Finn's talk in the house. And we also have Dan Mitchell, who has lost one of his own. And we're excited to hear what Dan Mitchell has to say and hear what TD Finn's talk has to say about Stefan Diggs being traded to the Houston Texans. Oh, wait, I take that back. Stefan Diggs and two draft picks traded hmm. to the Houston Texans for a second round pick. Welcome to the show, everybody. Hit that thumbs up button on your way in. TD, we'll start off with you, my friend. How are you feeling? Oh, man, it's been a long time since I felt this good, man. It's just so many beautiful things happening today. You know, April the 3rd, 2024, I proclaim this Dolphins Peace Day. You know, everybody <laughs> in the community get along with each other. And then on Peace Day, when we start uniting and coming together, the universe just blessed us with a huge trade that just made everything even all the better, man. We got to get into that and more. Thank you all for tuning in and getting in the huddle with us right now. I can't wait to give my thoughts on these things, man. <laughs> Mr. Dan Mitchell, how are you feeling today? It's been a few hours processing the trade. Yeah. But overall, before you get into the trade, just where you're, where's your head at right now? Where's your emotions at, bro? Dude, you know what? I feel like I'm in the final stage of grief, right? And that's acceptance. <laughs> and that is acceptance. All right, my friend? I'm doing fantastic. It's been good. I streamed for a little bit this morning. I'm, I met a lot of new friends. I had TD call me and laugh at me. I had Richie call me and laugh at me. I had my mother call <laughs> me and laugh at me. No, 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 I'm just kidding. I got my mother. She would never do that. Uh, but, I mean, all in all, dude... At the end of the day, I'm excited to dive into these topics and sort of curb expectations for everybody that's continuously wishing on our downfall. Um, all I'll say as a preview is tread carefully. Tread, tread mm. carefully, because you will just be setting yourself up for disappointment. Disappointment Dan is predicting for us fans hoping on the downfall of these Buffalo Bills. I'm really excited to hear your guys thoughts about this. I've had a uh, I was live on my show this morning and we had a Bills fan relentlessly <clears throat> coming after me saying that we're fine. He even came in on the call in show and was explaining why this is not a big deal. Woo! Copium is one hell of a drug drug, folks. So, TD, what does this mean for the Buffalo Bills? Steph, and then I want to start off with the Bills perspective. And then we got also got to mm -hmm. talk about the Houston Texans because, yeah. boy. That team just got even more loaded. We talked about them a lot in the show. So what does this mean for the Buffalo Bills? And how do you see this offense without <sighs> Stefan Diggs? And not to mention, I know that Dan didn't like him. He wasn't having a big impact. But Gabe Davis is gone and Stefan Diggs is gone. You add Curtis Samuel. And now you can definitely project them potentially drafting wide receiver in the first round. At least they should. So what are your thoughts of these Bills without Stefan Diggs this year? Man, it's a disaster, Richie. It's a disaster, man. <laughs> um, I, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, man. Um, they were the heavy favorites in the division, you know, even bet us had them as the heavy favorites favorites. As soon as I saw this move, I went right online to bet us and those odds have closed and I had to get, I had to do what I had to do, man, because I know my team's winning the division now, but listen, as far as the Buffalo bills, you lost Gabe Davis. Oh, well, you know, we had to lose him. Oh, you know, it was time, you know, blah, blah, blah. And now you lose Stefan Diggs. Your number one and two is like, really? Uh, your one and two is, it, to me is what? Shakir? Shakir and um, Mac Hollins? Is that what it is? Like, oh, 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 my, 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 my. Buffalo is in trouble. Josh Allen is going to be on the trade block in 2026. 
when he's one of the worst quarterbacks in the entire NFL this year. And listen to me. Think about it. This team is in trouble. They might win five games. They might win five games. Let me tell you why. Mm-hmm. Their top two receivers, Shakir and, and Mac Hollins, and on the other side of the ball, they're starting safe. It's Demar Hamlin. It don't like it don't get worse than this. Like the Bills are in complete shambles. And we're talking about, well, their first priority would be a wide receiver in the draft. It's not gonna be a top 10 pick. It's not going to be a, 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 top, a top 15 pick. So at the end of the day, you don't even know what you're going to get in the receiver that you're going to get. You don't even know what you're going to get. They're going to be leaning on Dalton King K to turn into Travis Kelsey, which isn't going to happen. Josh Allen is going to regress. He's going to throw the most picks in a single season of all time. If you don't already hold that record, by the way. And at the end of the day, The Buffalo Bills are starting their rebuild as we know it. They just don't know it yet. This is disastrous, Richie. Let me say this. Last thing real quick. The Buffalo Bills might be the worst team in the division now. The Patriots might actually win more games than the Buffalo Bills this year. You heard it here first, okay? But let me say this. Let me say this as well. I'm not crazy. Buffalo picked up some draft capital. Even though it's a big cap hit, they um, I, I wonder if they're going to spread out the dead cap or they're just going to eat it now. But they might have saved some money right now because I looked at the, the cap space for teams. I think they're at like 35 now. I don't know how that happened, but they figured it out. Yeah. I am not going to rule out. The only way of recovery for the Buffalo Bills, you get T. Higgins, to me it's a wash. But you go get Justin Jefferson, and the game changes. So I can see them trying to make a big move, but will it be successful? Will they be able to land it? I don't know. I'm just hoping that we could go through this offseason. They could get their little first-round wide receiver who probably ain't, ain't going to be all that. And I'm just hoping that they don't make a big trade to bring in one of those two guys, and then it's all good. They don't got the money for that, TD. What are you even saying? Uh, the money looked like they got the money. I've been looking at the cap. $31 million in dead cap. They're eating for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for seven days a week for the next year. Dan Mitchell, yeah. you sat with this news. You're on the stage of acceptance. Yeah. And I think I know I had a prediction of what Bills fans were going to say about this trade, of how they're going to rationalize of this being a positive and not – a negative. And yeah. so far I've been proven correct based off of the Bills fans I saw this morning. Let's hear your thoughts, man. So the funny thing is, is, is that it wasn't the fact that Diggs was traded because I've said it on this show. I've said it on the AFC's round table. I've said it on my own show where I said that I could care less if he was on this team or not, but I was absolutely dead set on the fact that it didn't make sense financially. As Richie just mentioned, $31 million dead that we're currently eating. Money that we had already ended up paying him, but uh, now since he's no longer on this team, we have to eat the entire situation. Here was one thing that really stood out to me, is is what we ended up trading him for. Because we got a second round pick in 2025, and then we ended up sending over a fifth and a sixth. Boys, I'm not sure about you, but that screams to me that Brandon Bean was doing everything and anything he could to get him off of this roster. And as a guy that would go out there and regularly defend Stephon Diggs, saying, don't read too much into his tweets, him and Josh Allen are cool, he's good for the Buffalo Bills, made me look completely dumb. The trade package that we sent or that we received for Stephon Diggs spells out one thing and one thing only, that he was a cancer to this locker room. It makes no sense to me. It makes no sense to me why Brandon Bean were to trade Stephon Diggs for a package like that. It basically felt to me that he accepted the first offer that was on the table because he was so desperate to get him out that he thought he was so bad for the culture of Buffalo that he just allowed him to end up walking. And don't get me wrong. Listen, um, great receiver. He certainly is. But like Gabe Davis and like Stephon Diggs, Joe Brady has proven that he's 
really not much of a sort of dude that wants to utilize those boundary receivers. Because not only did you see Gabe Davis' production fall off the face of the planet, Stephon Diggs' production fell off the face of the planet after week eight by itself. And the Bills became a run-first team with James Cook. They utilized Khalil Shakir. They utilized Josh Allen's legs. They utilized uh, Mr. Dalton Kincaid in his overall uh, sort of, you know, with his development in his rookie year. And it's it's shocking, man. It's it's shocking. I mean, this is the second team now that Stephon Diggs has basically forced his way out. And I'm not sure if you guys ended up seeing, but on Twitter two nights ago, yeah. Diggs actually replied to somebody in the comment section saying, hey, um, they said that I think this is more of a mutually beneficial situation. I think Diggs made Josh Allen better, but I also think Josh Allen makes Stephon Diggs better. And then Diggs responded, you sure, with a question mark. I can almost guarantee you I would love to be able to hack into Josh Allen's phone and see if Bean were to text him last night and told him that, hey, we're thinking about cooking up this trade. I wouldn't be surprised if Josh Allen said, do it. Get him out. Because (laughs) that relationship was damn tainted going into it. It's it's funny because you look at it and uh, somebody on Twitter ended up putting this out. Josh Allen's passer rating is 70.9 when he is targeting Stephon Diggs. His pass rating is 90.4 when he's targeting anybody but Stephon Diggs. So I wonder if to a point where there was something in the back of his head being like, damn, I better give Stephon Diggs the targets or otherwise he's about to cause a mess. And that was something in the back of his head. So it's it's just something I've been thinking about. Um, here's the thing. Bean is not done. He's planning on doing something crazy. Every single year where there's a time where he comes out, I'm like, what the hell is he doing? What sort of situation is he trying to wrap himself into? Nothing is off the table right now as far as ballsy moves. Trading up into the top 10 is now something I wouldn't be completely shocked over. I would not be surprised right now if Brandon Bean would be willing to give away his first and second this year and his first and second next year just to move up to number nine or hell, even number three. Regardless, the Buffalo Bills are definitely going to be double dipping in this year's draft in the receiver category. I think Brian Thomas Jr. is almost for sure going to be a Buffalo Bill. I think that's what our plan is. We want to trade up at least enough to get him. Uh, but at the end of the day, with Stephon Diggs, thank you so much for all of the production that you did end up giving us. But at the same time, I mean, last year we proved that we can win without him. We can win without him being the focal point of our offense. So it it sucks, but sounds like he was an absolute cancer right to that locker room. Dude. Now, the one thing I have a question to you, Mr. Dan Mitchell. Yeah. Right? Because you and Bills fans are saying, yeah, we won without him, right? Yeah. Uh, last I checked, he wasn't hurt, correct? He was on the field for those games? Yeah. Don't you think that his presence had something to do with opening up the guys around Shakir, Gabe Davis, Kincaid, where the defenses were zeroing in on Stefan Diggs, which allowed the other guys to kind of eat a little bit, and it gave Josh Allen a security blanket to have Stefan Diggs as his number one, and the defenses were zeroing in on Stefan Diggs with the double teams in the brackets to open up the one-on-ones for the other playmakers around him, where not his ability on the field in terms of catching balls and scoring touchdowns late in the season last year wasn't there productive wise, but don't you feel like his presence had something to do with the success of the overall offense? Like, damn, we got to make sure we focus in on Stephon Diggs because yeah. if we don't, he's going to beat us over the top and that opened up everybody else around uh, yeah. the offense. And now without a bona fide number one guy and you have a yeah. bunch of just like mid tier level wide receivers like Curtis Samuel, who is a solid receiver. And then whoever you get in the NFL draft, there's not that bona fide guy to really try to pinpoint. So, What's your thoughts of that about that? Small extent could be credited over to that, but I think the biggest contributor there was the Buffalo Bills finally decided to run the ball. The second that Joe Brady ended up taking over, we started seeing a massive uptick in overall rushing attempts from James Cook in the backfield. I probably credit that more into the ability with more receivers starting to get open because Stephon Diggs at the beginning when Joe Brady took over, he was being targeted. He was certainly being targeted, trust me, but... He was hauling in about 25, 33%. He was dropping all over the place. Um, Same thing that it had to do within the playoffs. So, like, you'll notice brackets. You'll notice double teams toward the beginning of that stretch. But afterwards, didn't see it as much. 
like going into it. But listen, I mean, like I think the Houston Texans got a great receiver. And I do think that he is about to be scorched earth over there. I think that he's still going to be a thousand yard guy. I think he's going to be great for CJ Stroud. This basically solidifies the Texans of winning the AFC South. But CJ Stroud, dude, keep him happy. And you better hope your first pass better not be to Nico Collins, bro, or he's about to be pulling an AB. Well, big one. Well, I, I think a big thing that we need to realize too in this trade is. Buffalo is no longer a top seven team in the NFL. They're they're not a playoff team right now. And uh, unless they unless they address this situation, they're not a playoff team. Well, it's it's funny because <laughs> I mean, here's the deal, man. I think that there's no way that this is not absolute top priority. This is absolute top priority. I mean, you mentioned like first off with Justin Jefferson, I think that's completely off the table. I know that we have some newfound money. And by the way, it does appear that Houston is taking the majority of the contract. We're getting absolutely screwed this year. But afterwards, we have no financial obligation, which is nice. Um, T. Higgins is a possibility, and so is Brandon Ayuk. I wouldn't be surprised if we're making calls over there to test the waters and see if that's it. But I have a feeling that we're trying to take a page out of the Packers book right now. And like we're trying to run with the youth. Like, we're trying to be, like, run first. And then rather than a receiver developing your quarterback, you have a quarterback that's entering in, like, as a veteran, and he needs to be able to develop some of these younger guys and see what's – but, but I mean, that's exactly what the draft is for, boys. And, I mean, say that I were to be a betting man, I have a feeling that something crazy is coming for Buffalo, whether or not that that's bringing in, like, one of those receivers that have demanded a trade or are – rumored to want to get out of their current situation or us trading up pretty massively. I think that's what we should have because as far as I know of Bean, he's never been that guy that wants to do a rebuild. It's just not the case. Sean McDermott knows for a damn fact that he's on the hot seat and this is his final year prior to Stephon Diggs being traded. So will we, will we be better off with another wide receiver number one? I don't know, but what I can promise you is, is that like our organization is not planning on like tanking and taking a year off and then hopefully make some splashes the following year in free agency. Something's coming. I feel it. But you do, you do agree. If they don't address this, you're not a playoff team. Uh, no, 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 We are, man. As long as we have Josh Allen on the squad, man, we're good. As long as now, we have Josh Allen on the squad, baby, we're that good. That brings me up to Josh Allen as my next question well this isn't really a question but this is kind of like a statement i want to say about mr josh allen this is his time it is this is is. his time because he's already in my opinion you know around the nfl majority of nfl fans think of josh allen as a top tier quarterback because i think he's there's stats and evidence that he proved it but when patrick mahomes had tyree kill leave what was the narrative patrick mahomes he was not going to be able to do anything yeah. And what does he do? He wins another Super Bowl without Tyreek Hill to prove how great Patrick Mahomes is. Let's go back to Josh Allen's career. His first two seasons in the NFL, even Bills fans are questioning if he's the guy. He did not look great. He showed flashes. He was up and down. He did nothing to prove that he is a quarterback that you want to be building your franchise around. And then in year three, the Bills were smart enough to get him a bona fide number one target in Stephon Diggs, and that was the year Josh Allen broke out. That's when Josh Allen became an elite level quarterback. And that ever since then, he's never looked back. Now you get rid of Stefan Diggs. Now this is your time. What type of quarterback are you? Are you a quarterback that desperately needs a number one star level, all pro wide receiver? Or are you good enough to elevate the guys around you? So this is Josh Allen's opportunity to kind of show the rest of the league. I'm able to do that because if he goes back and regresses, it's over. He's top 10, maybe top 15. If that, like, this is really where Josh Allen can make his name heard. And I'm really intrigued to see what version of Josh Allen we get without Stefan Diggs. We know what he is without Diggs. <laughs> All right. We know All what right. he is. What we is he? Know. What is he, TD? Without it. Without him. Pure, uh, I ain't got no garbage on my desk to throw it in, in him. So I'm just saying, we know what he is without Stefan Diggs. He that, almost sat with him. So tired. <laughs> Listen, that is a tired narrative. I have explained Stephon Diggs is training wheels for Josh Allen. He was training wheels for him, and I will credit Stephon Diggs for his absolute leap 
into NFL stardom as the quarterback by itself. But I said it again, numbers don't lie. All right, there's narratives and there's numbers. I always choose numbers. I always choose numbers. <laughs> is that why you're asking in the Super Bowl? That Josh Allen's passer rating is 30 points better when he is targeting anybody not named Stephon Diggs. And this is as of late. So I think Stephon Diggs did his job. I'm thankful for what he did. I'm kind of pissed off about like his Twitter antics <laughs> and stuff, like throwing our quarterback. But listen, Richie painted a perfect picture right here, folks. This is Josh Allen's time. This is yeah. his year. This is a giant, giant opportunity for him to go out there and show everybody, yeah, you really thought it was Diggs. In fact, Diggs's infamous tweet that says, you sure, question mark, we have to release some merch on our website before <laughs> the Bills and the Houston games. Good that point. says, you sure. Good that says, you sure. And you guys are versus Houston? Oh, yeah, you are. The Texans game needs to wear – in fact, we're releasing it tonight, folks. Is that in <laughs> Buffalo or in Houston? That game. game. It's in Houston. Ah, ah. Uh, ours sure? is in Houston too. So that means Richie you is at home. home, huh? Again, easy. Yeah. Listen, I will say this: you're right. This is his time. Huh? He has to be able to prove it this year. But I gotta ask Richie a question about this because if they don't address this wide receiver situation in a DeMar Hamlin corner situation, we're going to sweep them this year. Do you feel the Jets are going to do the same thing? I mean, hey, if there was one team in the division that I feel like the Jets have been able to be, it's ironic because the Bills have been the best team in the division recently, but the Jets match up the best against the Bills. We've never been able to beat the Patriots. Luckily, we got that monkey off our back last year. The Dolphins got the better of us last season. So I'm not going to jump the gun and say we're sweeping the Bills. I'm just not there yet. I still think the Bills are a good football team. I mean, I'm I'm staying humble. I'm staying realistic. I still have the Jets sweeping the Bills. But at the end of the day, I still think that the division is now gaping open. And I said this before the, the Diggs trade, that the path for the Jets to make the postseason is winning the AFC East. And, bro, you look at the odds on BetUS. I'm still shocked at the odds. Like, guys, go place your bets right now because it's going to shift a huge amount very soon. Especially after the draft. Um, so what's the order now? You know, my new order is Miami wins the division. Jets get a wild card. The Patriots about seven wins and the Bills about five. What's your order, Richie? <laughs> <laughs> this is blasphemy. Wow. Uh, this is a I mean, the Bills are won until proven otherwise. Right? They've done it four straight years. And then the Jets are right behind them, baby. Jets are right behind them, and then Dolphins, Patriots. But I'm predicting the Jets to finish in the first spot this year. I genuinely think, and I said it last year, and I was wrong, and I think a lot of that had to do with the injuries, of course. But uh, if we're healthy, there's no reason why the Jets cannot win this damn division, baby. Let's go! And I just realized we have an historical amount of live viewers right now, just under 500 people. If you guys really? want to do us a gigantic favor, simply hit the like button, please, for us on the huddle. Right now, let's get way over 200 likes. We have breaking NFL news this morning, a blockbuster trade between the Houston Texans and the Buffalo Bills. If you're enjoying the show here, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to BetUS TV. We are inching close to 6,000 subscribers. A quick reminder, we're live here on the huddle Monday through Friday, 3 o'clock EST, five days a week. And I'm really excited to continue this show with you guys because it's been an absolute joy. So shout out to all the people tuning in live. Woo, Absolutely. this is going to be fun, baby. This is going to hey, be Richard. fun. Can we get Dan's order? Because we gave you ours. Um, what's your order now, Dan? And be, and be honest. Do it for the people. Be honest for the people. Put I'm us serious. first for the people. Like, I am serious. Listen, this is a quarterback-driven league, and the Buffalo Bills are the best quarterback in the AFC East. There's no question. There's no debate. This is a quarterback-driven league. So <laughs> I'm going Bills. I'm going Jets. I'm going Dolphins. And I'm going Patriots. If it's a quarterback-driven league, how come we have the Jets at two and the Dolphins at three? Because Aaron Rodgers is better than two. Hey, oh. You're a hater because you're a Dolphin hater. That's all it is. Oh, no, because no, no, he has logical man, sense. I have no skin in the game for either you of You got every bit of skin in the true. game. You're the biggest hater, and now your team it's, is in a demise. There's not one non-Dolphins fan that would agree with you. <laughs> hey, about, about, what, about what? Listen, taking Tua over at Rodgers, bro. Tua is Listen, the best so quarterback in the division. And Aaron hey, Rodgers. We're not going through this again. It, I, it, I can't. We don't have to go through I, it. This year will <laughs> prove it. This year, all the marbles are on the table. Josh Allen ain't got no weapons. Let's see how good he is. 
Aaron Rodgers, I ain't even got a comment on. I'd have proved my point a million times on this channel. This season will prove it all. We can all be quiet about it. We can stop arguing about it. We'll let them put it on the field, and you guys will see who which quarterback reigns supreme this year. And, and, and at the end of the day, y'all deep down inside, you know who's going to come out on top. You know what you I think is going to happen? I'll give you my Michael prediction. Maddox. I think Tua is going to have more <laughs> passing yards. I think he's going to uh, have – more passing yards than Aaron Rodgers. Better. He may have more passing touchdowns. Better. But the Jets will finish with more wins more than win. the Miami no, Dolphins. Won't. No, they won't. No, they won't. Stop. Because Tua just eats Stop. and has all these playmakers, <laughs> and they have all these yards, but they don't win big games. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah, the yeah. difference. Well, give me W's well, over no, passing no, yards no, and listen. stats. I don't give a crap about that. This give me why W's. Have, this is why y'all have no shot. We got the best quarterback. We don't need to debate it. We got the best running back room you in don't. the division. We we nope. got the best running back room in the division. No, you don't. We have the best receiving core in the division. Yes, we yes, do. You do. Yes, we you do. We got the best that. running back. How, how are you going to say we don't have the best running back core in the division, Richie? Because Brees Hall alone is better oh, than all you folks. Oh, this Brees Hall crap again. H A M well, most better than Brees Hall. Like it. I'm not even going to go there because I would like, I wish we could bring on, I wish we could bring on like legit NFL analysts. And I would love to ask Daniel Jeremiah, like every like legit NFL analyst, who would you rather have on your football team, Brees Hall or A Chain slash Mostert? Like everybody would pick Brees Hall. Like everybody, bro. Everybody. A chain is a better running back than 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 Brees Hall. He just does it by committee. And Mostert, twenty one touchdowns. Did you see what this man did last year? Oh, you know what, God. Richie? I, you know what? You're you're really trolling on this one. I'm not. This is the first time I, I know that you're really trolling because something about this make me think that you truly believe Brees Hall better than those guys. Uh, please tell me you're joking for real, for real. Is there anybody in the chat that's not a Dolphins fan that thinks? Brees Hall is not better than A Chain slash Mostert. Please let me Man, know. Listen, Enlighten me. It, Only Dolphins what? fans think that. Brees Hall is objectively known as a top running back in this league, right next to Christian McCaffrey. It's not next even close. To Raheem Mostert next to Devin A Chain. No one has Raheem Mostert and A Chain at the Man, top of yes, the running back do. list. Yes, they Nobody do. Nobody does. Listen. Listen, um, like, I don't Bruce, understand. Kevin, man, if you every list in, I see like, has Brees you know right next to McCaffrey and eight chain like nine and eight I, I and like this. most are 13. Like, what? I, I noticed you moved the goalpost too. You tried to make this even more about the individual, but the original comment was we had the best running back core in the AFC East. Okay, might yeah, even, the one two punch. You, you got NFL. that. Congrats. Okay, but I'd rather just, have the one of Brees than those two yeah. still. Listen, if you get one Brees. If he get hurt, what you got? If we get hurt, we still got somebody. And what do you Congrats. deal with with Brees? Injuries. So at the end of the day, we uh, got the better What do you mean forward. injuries? He's yeah, played all better. 17 games last year. Yeah. All 17 we, games last year. Did not, Richie, miss a, not, did not miss one game. Richie, that's why you conceded to it to have more yards and touchdowns because we got the best run game. We got the best wide receivers. We got the best quarterback. At some point, y'all just need to give it up. Say that my team is going to be – say the Jets are going to be better so, collectively. Because so we're not going to mention the defense. Free. We're not yeah, going to mention what, the defense. That's what I was just going to say. At least make that your argument. But do not sit here and make it seem like Aaron Rodgers is better than two or Josh Allen is better. Do not make it seem like y'all got better offenses. We have the best offense in this division hands down. Not even close. Bro, I'll, I'll finish off with this, okay? You can definitely debate on Tua all you want, but I think the running back debate is even more insane to hear from you I can't than, than the Brees Hall one. Honestly. I can't believe Like, you Brees Hall is literally league. known. Like, go to any, like, any NFL analyst and ask you, if you had to choose between Brees and those two running backs, who are you taking on your team? Like, it's not even close, bro. I but I got – but. I, but I digress, baby, because the Jets' well, well, defense is on another level than the Miami Dolphins. Tua has literally – like, who's taking Tua in a big moment? Like, what's your goal as a fan of an NFL team? To do what? Win a Super Bowl. What the heck has Tua showed that he has any chance of doing that? <laughs> that makes you believe he's better than even Josh Allen. Throw Aaron Rodgers out of the conversation. Tua's not even close to Josh Allen. He's not. No, nah, Richie, you – Take Aaron Rodgers out, okay? Because how can you rationalize Tua being better than Josh Allen? Tell me right now. What has Tua done that Josh Allen has not? 
Listen, Amy, <laughs> Richard, you're, please, you're talk, because you're, you're speaking talk, out of your, you know what? You're talking about the MVP Super Bowl winning Aaron Rodgers. Did you I say it? Have did, that did you listen to the question? Let me reset. Josh let me reset Allen, the question. He ain't never did nothing. Rodgers has nothing no to do with Super this. Bowl. Josh Allen ain't win no Super Bowl. He get bounced every time. I mean, at the end of the day, yeah, he can run the ball. He's he's a fullback. That's how I look at Josh You're Allen. moving the goalposts. Let me ask the question one last time. Go Aaron Rodgers doesn't exist. He's not involved in this conversation anymore. Okay, all right. What Let's has Tua that. Tagovailoa shown that makes him better than Josh Allen as a quarterback? Consistent progression. Josh Allen regressing. What? <laughs> And by the way, I ain't going to let you get away with it, Richie. Let's get to the FBC. facts real quick. I know I know, we want to get to our next topic, but no, I'm about to eat you on camera right now, Richie, because you you talking blasphemy. If you want to talk about running backs, what did um, Brees Hall do last year compared to Devin A. Chain in half the games? Oh, you want to talk? You want to bring up the fact Brees Hall ran the ball 223 times for 994 yards. 223 times, Richie. Devin A. Chain only played half the games, ran the ball 103 times, and put up 800 yards. Brees Hall averaged 4.5 yards a carry. Devin A. Chain averaged 7.8 yards a carry. Brees Hall, five touchdowns. Devin A. Chain, eight touchdowns. Miss me with that crazy talk. We got the best running back in the NFL. And I could have pulled up most of the stats and they would have been better. It's over. Next, we can go to the next topic. How emotional right. you're getting, bro. Those Cause numbers you, mean because you believe that there's Brees no Hall context in our involved. Back. Congratulations, you have a way, way better system of an offense than the New York Jets did last oh, year. Here we go. I mean, you do. Oh, you go. have the wet. I mean, what? What? Do you not like understand context of football? Well, there's a reason why those running backs are successful. If we're talking about individual talent. Ah, ah, if you, you put Brees Hall on that system, he's doing all of that, mm -hmm. if not more. No, you put you A-Chain on the Jets the last year. You put Mostert on the Jets last year. He's not doing any no. of that stuff, bro. The Miami Dolphins the are an absolutely excellent offensive scheme. The run game, I was blown away by it last year watching the Miami Dolphins with their offense earlier in the year. I'm like, wow, look at the holes. Like, their running backs are fast. They're, they have a great running room. And they know how to actually move the football down the field and score points. And as a Jets fan, I was admired by it. I was like, wow, this is beautiful. This is great offense. A lot of it has to do with coaching. A lot of it has to do with the system. Oh, and Rich. if you're just giving a chain all the credit for all those yards and nothing to do with McDaniel and the overall system, I don't know what to tell you. That's not a knock no. on him, but you got to add the, t the context involved. Yeah, add. Do you know what the context is? The context is good Devin offense. A chain. Devin A. Chain is a better running back than Brees Hall. That's what the context is. context is. Oh my God! The man, the man destroyed him statistically and only played half the season. But, but don't you understand football I, from this yes, perspective, TD? Yes, Do you realize what defenses were doing to the New York Jets no, last year? Yeah, Do you? Not, yeah, what were not they doing? Allow, not me. Not allowing y'all to throw the ball. By doing what? By shutting down the throw, so y'all carried, y'all ran the ball more. You ran the ball because you didn't trust um, Zach Wilson. You ran the ball more Why? and still couldn't do nothing. Yeah. Uh, you're missing a key, a key component here. The defenses would load up the box because Bro. they're not afraid of the pass. When you have a, an actual good offense like the Miami Dolphins did last year oh. with Tua leading the league in passing yards, it's going to open up opportunities for the run game. The New York Jets offense was going up against eight men in the box every single game and okay. shut down the run, bro. There's context okay. involved. If you're just a fan, let me finish off with this. If you're one of those fans that strictly goes by box score stats, I'm sorry to tell you, bro, you got to dig deeper, man. I'm All just right. telling you, that is that just shows you your intelligence of football. Okay, Richie, then what you're telling me right now is that Brees Hall going to have a better season than they chain this year because y'all don't have those issues anymore, right? You don't have to worry about the box being full anymore, right? Right? Yeah, if Aaron, yeah, if Aaron Rodgers is fully yeah. healthy and yeah. with all the you weapons are healthy, the absolutely. Ifs? All right. We'll I mean, see. If, if Rodgers goes no. down again and we have no pass attack, this is going to be the same thing all over again. You guys Come had on. healthy tool last year. We Listen. didn't. All right. All right, all right, Richie. Well, guess what? Time always tells. And this one, you're going to be wrong, bro. Both of them going to have cool. a better season. And so, yes, Richie, I certainly did. See how I shifted the argument from them trolling me on Stefan Diggs and I pinned them against each other? Because you're irrelevant <laughs> now, Dad. The bill's irrelevant. 
Oh, my friend. Listen, I was actually just DMing somebody. It was Colby, who is our patch representative over at the AFC's roundtable. He said, Bills are done. And I said, it's about to hurt a hell of a lot more when the Buffalo Bills win the division with Curtis Samuel as wide receiver number. <laughs> now, I will say, if that happens, if, if Josh Allen, <laughs> if Josh Allen I does prove himself. The video that you would put out, or the live stream clip. Uh, that, be like, the Bills are with Curtis Samuel. <laughs> it's Amar Hamlin. That's the number one. Uh, yeah, that, yeah, oh, no. All right, before we move on to the next topic, one last question. Who's better, Sauce Gardner or Jalen Ramsey? Oh, God. Uh, how, many, how many times do I have like to there, answer this for like, you? Bro, like, because I just really want to see, like, where you are at. Like, what kind of troll job are you going to continue the I troll job or be you, real for once? I told you. Heading into this that, season. I told you on that specific question, I will be honest and fair and be truthful. They're tied. I <laughs> see that. Thank you again for proving my point, bro. It's just, it's, it's, it's hilarious. It really is. You see, guys, I just got him again, bro. Bro, it's when like, the NFL cracks down on Sauce Gardner holding this year, you'll see, you'll see, bro. It's not even like, bro. Oh, it's, it's, bro, it's stop fun. bringing up Sauce Gardner, man. Can you, you just keep that? proving my point, bro? It's hilarious. It really is, dude. Like you can't just, like I can admit where the Dolphins are better at than the Jets objectively but you just can't swallow the truth it's okay time will tell time is of the essence so let's get bit let's get back into this Diggs trade real quick and talk about the texans perspective um so stefan Diggs is now on the houston texans and then we're going to get into the nfl draft sleepers um so what do you think the houston Texans is going to look like because we talked a lot about the bills but now let's flip this over to the texan side of things I mean, you talk about Nico Collins and Tank Dell who had breakout seasons, okay? You have Dalton Schultz. You add Joe Mixon. They have a decent offensive line. And now Stephon Diggs is in the building. How mm-hmm. good can this Houston Texans offense be, Dan? Let me tell you what. If the Houston Texans do not at the very least make the AFC championship this year, if they don't make the AFC championship, hell, if they don't make the Super Bowl this year, then I would probably chop this season up to be a disappointment. Now, obviously, you do need to consider and you do need to be scared of a, of a potential sophomore slump out of C.J. Stroud. However, I don't see that based off of what we've seen from his rookie season. I think that he will continue to develop. Can he stay healthy? If this team can stay healthy... They have absolutely everything. We're all excited about Stephon Diggs. He's one of the best route runners in the game. He's going to open it up. He's the best receiver on that roster automatically. Have a healthy Tank Dell coming back. Nico Collins as well. Noah Brown, who is a solid wide receiver for, no one's talking about. Joe Mixon, who is also a massive threat when it comes into the pass game as well. They're just going to be spraying all over the place. Spraying all over the place. I will say, however, that I think this AFC South is going to be a hell of a lot more competitive. And I do think that all of the division rivals will play them a lot closer than some of the other teams that are outside of the AFC. Uh, but listen, man, sky is the absolute limit. I'm sure the odds probably aren't too favorable of them winning the AFC South since just about everybody and their grandmother are probably picking the Texans to do it. But man, it's going to be must-watch TV. As long as CJ Stroud stays healthy, Sky's the limit for this team, man. Where do you see the Houston Texans landing this year, TD? I think that they're the front runners to win the AFC South again. But do you see them going far? Do you see them winning the division? Like, what does Stefan Diggs do for this team? I got to say this. I agree with Dan um, to, to a degree. I, I don't have Super Bowl winning expectations or going, but – they have to at least make it to the AFC Championship. This team is loaded. They have the O-line. They have the running back. They could use a little depth there. But they have the wide receiving core. If a main receiver goes down, they still got two guys. If two go down, they at least got one. I mean, not many teams are in that position. Even the Dolphins are top-heavy with two, and that's it. So it's just a beautiful situation. And above all, they have the, the Schultz at the tight end position, you know, um, one, of the, one of the better tight ends in the league. And you got C.J. Stroud. I thought about this, and I got to tell you, I haven't seen a team better constructed to beat Patrick Mahomes. I haven't seen a team better constructed to beat him. And let me say why, because it's a great I'm I'm starting to 
come to the realization that in the playoffs, all them great defenses don't matter. This ain't the old school defense like the Bears and Baltimore and all that. When it comes to the playoffs, Patrick Mahomes, there ain't a defense that's going to phase him. Okay? But in order to beat Patrick Mahomes, you just have to outplay him. It's that simple. Stop thinking you can do it on the defensive side of the ball. He ran through everybody top defense, didn't he? As he always does when the lights are brightest. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, the only way you beat him is playing better than him at that position. We're not talking about he played elite and you played great. He gets that all the time. You cannot make the mistakes. You have to play lights out in a big moment just like him. And the Texans have geared up to at least give C.J. Strouds the weapons to do so. And let's be honest here. Can you tell me what Patrick Mahomes outside of in the second round and for, um, past that, what he did better than C.J. Stroud last year? C.J. Stroud played on his level last year throughout the season and in that first round. Young team, second round, understandable. But now, man, I'm telling you now, I feel like they've geared up and they're not they're not sitting there looking at, you know, teams that beat them. They're like, who's at the top? Let's come for them. And I think that they're a top three team in the AFC right now. I still have... Um, I still have number one, the Chiefs. I have number two, Baltimore. And now number three, I have the Texans. You can't, can you guys tell me a team better than the Texans on paper right now? And, and you can also say not on paper because they've already proven something last year. They're just, you look at what they did this offseason. You can argue about Baltimore and the Chiefs, but who's better in the AFC than the Texans? I'm not going to sit here and say the Dolphins are. I'd be lying. Now it's all going to come down to their defensive play in the regular season. Um, will that maintain? But they brought Daniel Hunter and some and Autry and I mean some big pieces. I mean, they literally loaded up. But they taking advantage of that rookie deal. So if they can load up in the draft with secondary. Mm-hmm. Like solid secondary. Because right now they don't have a first round pick anymore. So yep. it's the second round is all that they have as of right now. So if, say, for example, they grab like a Cameron Kinchins <laughs> in the second, a solid safety, one of those Florida State boys mm. for like DB, they're in a perfect position to be competitive. But then again, I mean, here is this also debate that comes up. You have a generational star quarterback. So time is of the essence. You yeah. better damn near get it done within the next couple of years because all these big names you just brought on, baby, that's not going to be anything. That's not going to, like, be a thing. We saw, the like, each and every single one of us has seen the repercussions of paying a top-tier quarterback of not being able to have that sort of talent right there. Pat Mahomes is the first one. Josh Allen was the next one. Joe Burrow is the next one. Not going to be able to have all this top-tier talent around him anymore. If the Texans really want to take advantage of this, they have about two to three years where they can really make some noise before uh, that almost inevitable contract for C.J. Stroud is about to come. Hmm. Yeah, I and mean, they got it's $12 all... million. Dollars. What? They got $12 million right now, too. Keep yeah. that in mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, it really comes down to winning on your rookie quarterback's deal. Got to do it. And when it doesn't win it, and that's, sorry, Dan, but the Bills failed to do that with Josh Allen, and now their Super Bowl window <laughs> Uh, I'm excited for that 30 for 30, you know, documentary of the Bills Super Bowl window, you know, without them even going to the Super Bowl. That I will watch. I will buy. That, that's going to be fun. I mean, that 13 second game, that was a great game. So I think they're going to have a lot of fun, like featuring that as a main element of the the documentary, Dan, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the trolls just keep coming, don't they, man? Come on, man. The Super Bowl window is still alive, Dan. What am I saying? You got Josh Allen as your quarterback. Hey, baby. As long as he's there. As long you got as Sean there, McDermott. Well, I think it's it. time for us to finally get off this topic for the better of your mind. Let's Thank get you. into the NFL draft. Let's talk about some sleepers. <laughs> and maybe we can connect some, some sleepers to the Buffalo Bills in the first hey, round. No. Because, hey, there's sleepers in every single draft. 
and I feel like we want to break some down. So the NFL draft is almost here. I mean, we are talking about three weeks or four weeks from like today will be one week. will be one day off. One, two, three. Yeah, three weeks is the NFL draft. So guys, in the chat right now, let us know any sleepers that you may have in this year's NFL draft. Now, there's a lot of different ways to go about an NFL sleeper or draft uh, prospect for that matter. Like someone that's getting projected to go later in the draft that you think should go higher. It can even be a top 10 pick that people are sleeping on for all those matters. So Dan, is there any sleeper that you really love? Maybe it's for the bills or maybe even a player that you don't think the bills will target because it's not a position of need or anything. Who are some of the biggest sleepers in this year's draft class? So number one is going to be Chop Robinson. He's going to be a defensive end mm. at Penn State. He's being the Jets awesome. just had a meeting with him, and that, that, that actually put Jets fans in a frenzy because we're like, Why? He's, being, he's being mocked in the second, but I Why? promise you, he's going. Because he's a pass rusher, and Jets fans think that Robert Sala has this addiction and infatuation with pass rushers, and and we have like um like yeah. PTSD of just going defense when we need offense. That's why. Mm. Yeah. 110% some Chop Robinson action. And definitely stop sleeping on a lot of these receivers that like you might be able to find in the second round. I don't think that they will, will be drafted in the first. But, I mean, Malachi Corley, absolute stud. Absolute stud. I think so. the only reason why he's not going as high as he is because he went to a smaller school. But he's going to be an absolutely deadly receiver going into it. Lad McConkey is definitely... Definitely going to be picked a lot higher. I am almost convinced that Kansas City is going to trade up to ensure that they get him on that roster. He's a Kansas City Chiefs kind of guy. And a fourth-round talent who I think has all of the talent in the world, who I think probably should be mocked or actually should be drafted in the second or the third. It's a defensive tackle by the name of Christian Boyd. He went to Northern Illinois or Northern Iowa, one of the two. Uh, But dude is an absolute savage when it comes into pass rush, when it comes into run defense. He's athletic as hell. There's a lot of sleeping talent in this draft all across the board, especially offensive tackle, especially wide receiver. And then even the safety position is pretty solid too. So definitely start doing y'all's research, man, because I know that a lot of us just end up watching the first and second night of the draft. And then after, and then right afterwards, you know, like for, for the day where we're just watching fourth through seventh rounders, you're going to be seeing a lot of very good talent that could be day one contributors going late i saw lad on k adam's show say that he met with the bills multiple times is that someone that you want the bills to target definitely thousand and ten percent man four four three speed absolute elite when it comes into like stop and change of direction has a great route tree by itself he's definitely not my first overall pick right as far as like what i'm looking for it's still very obviously brian thomas jr but I'll tell you what, I have Lab McConkey over A.D. Mitchell, and I'm one of the few that says that. But, yeah, hmm. I have Lab McConkey over A.D. Mitchell as far as what I want. T.D., any uh, players in this year's draft that you feel like is are considered sleepers? Yeah, there's a few. Um, first, I want to start with the wide receiver, Xavier Leggett. Um, I thought he had a slow start in, start in, his, um, in his collegiate career, but really blossomed last year. Um, it's just, you know, people that I think that if they, if crazily they fall to 55 where the Dolphins are, that I think would be very interesting for them to pick. And I think that, um, I don't think he'll make it there, but there's a possibility. Um, a lot of people, I don't know if they're giving him the praise that I think that he's going to deserve on the next level. The other two is, is two players at the same position. And a lot of people are going to say they're projected potentially first round. Why would you say they're sleepers? Um, I'm going to go Bo Nix and Michael Penix. I'm starting to feel like both of those guys are better than Caleb Williams. Oh, is that right? That's a bold take. Caleb because I finally, I finally finished my work on Caleb Williams. Um, so what do you think? So is he a one-read guy? He, he, straight two of vibes. After I'm done, I've, I've finished my... But he'd be the no, best no, no, quarterback no, no, no. in his division. He, no, no, no. He has, he's has more than two. Let me get that straight. When I say two of vibes, I remember whenever I evaluated two and watched the film against great competition. See, that's the thing. When I do quarterbacks, I don't care about the small schools that you play. You put up 60 points and you score five touchdowns. I don't care about watching those where life is easy. I watch all the ranked teams you play when the competition is at least closer to the NFL and it's still not there. That's how I evaluate my quarterbacks. And I get too much first read, more than I saw with two, in my opinion, 
also um, when the competition is thicker, when it's a little bit tougher, I don't. I see big plays when he gets out of trouble, but I don't see the big play ability with his arm in the in the tough situations. I see the arm all day in the in the bad games. I did see a few of them, but um, I'm getting vibes of um, uh, what's the word? Um, privilege. I'm getting vibes of the privilege around him allotted production. I'll put it like that. The only thing I smile about is when nothing's there and he can escape this and get out of there, headed towards the sideline, flicking the ball down the field and making a touchdown. I smile. I get happy. But outside of that, I don't know, man. I I, 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 I hope he can translate to the NFL, but I don't know. I really don't know. My biggest thing with Caleb was the fact that he does not rank well when mm. he's pressured or when he's blitzed. That, like, dude, and like, let's not when pretend. The pressure comes dude, exactly. And let's not pretend that this dude ever played in the damn SEC or anything like that, where he was going up against like top echelon defenses, top echelon pass rushes for the entire time. He played for Southern Cal, my friend. All right. He very rarely went up against like these like top echelon sort of competition that he's probably going to be seeing in the NFL at the end of the day. So um, he has all the weapons. OK, especially if they're able to bring in another uh, receiver with Keenan Allen and with DJ Moore, he should be able to get away from the pressure side of things, because one of those three wide receivers is likely going to create separation before the play breaks down. So. We'll see what's going on. But listen, I like Bo Nix a lot, too. He's going up a bit on my draft board myself. Now, the final topic of the show that I saw today that I had to had to talk about with you guys yeah. is apparently there is a scenario where the Minnesota Vikings will roll with Sam Darnold as their quarterback this year yeah, and not draft a quarterback. And they'd roll the dice with Sam and look yeah. for a quarterback in next year's draft, if not 2025. Now... I, I thought it was funny because the first thing I did is went to the comments to see Vikings fans saying, yep, not a Vikings fan if this happens. So none of them has faith in Sam Darnold. Um, so listen, obviously, I will always have a soft spot for Sam. I have a way bigger soft spot for I don't even, I'll, I'll be honest. I do not have a soft spot for Zach Wilson at all. I do for Sam. Different situations. I won't go into why. But I feel like this is Sam Darnold's opportunity. And I. I feel like with Caden O'Connell, and of course, I am definitely biased towards Sam Darnold. I definitely can admit he's a bust, right? But boy, you saw what Josh Dobbs did last year in Kevin O'Connell's offense for a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think Sam in that offense with those receivers, if Justin Jefferson stays, like we might see a potential like breakout season, a Baker Mayfield opportunity. I mean, everybody was counting out Baker Mayfield. He gets an opportunity. Now, all of a sudden, he's the franchise quarterback for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'm not saying it's guaranteed, but I'm curious what your guys' thoughts of the potential idea of Sam being the main starter for the Vikings this year and Kevin O'Connell giving him the job for this season. Dan, starting with you. So here's the thing, man. Listen, I mean, we saw Sam Darnold start under Kyle Shanahan's offensive mind, and how did that work out? So well, he never was given the opportunity. <laughs> well, I mean, Rock he started 30. the game, didn't he? Yeah, Rock he started 31. the game, I want to say. I think it was the final week, and he didn't look too hot. But, I mean, listen, I think it might be to a point where they they don't have a choice. They have to at this specific spot. I mean, unless everybody is assuming – or they're predicting that they're going to attempt to trade up to like three or four and then grab J.J. McCarthy, maybe Drake May, one of those other guys at the end of the day. But it doesn't mean that they're not going to draft a quarterback in general. Maybe what this noise is, what this smoke is, is, is that they plan on taking the traditional approach and they have Sam Darnold starting and then whoever they decide to bring in, more than likely if they stay put sort of right where they're at and then make sure that that quarterback gets developed – I'll tell you what, man, listen, I think that if Sam Darnold gets the nod and if he is the QB for that organization, I think that they probably finish exactly where they were last year. Um, I think that this is probably also going to trigger a, oh, breaking news, we have Mr. Justin Jefferson. He now wants out 
of Minnesota within the next month or two. Say the draft goes by and they don't grab and they don't grab a they don't grab a quarterback, man. Don't be surprised if you see that breaking news from Schefter saying that Jefferson wants out of Minnesota. Uh, but it's it's interesting, man. I mean, I really don't like the quarterback class next year in 2025 outside of Shador. I don't know, man. I just think it's smoke and mirrors. I think maybe they're just trying to throw some people off so they have no idea what the Vikes are planning on doing. Yeah, what's your thoughts on this hypothetical scenario, TD? <laughs> Top five QB? Richie, when Sam, Dar- when Sam Darnold was a Jet, you really liked him, didn't you? I really did, man. <laughs> I... I, I I put him as the franchise quarterback for the Jets the moment he was drafted and oh didn't think anything God. otherwise. Oh, man. Listen, man. Sam Darnold ain't starting for no Minnesota Vikings, okay? Stop. <laughs> Just stop, okay? They go draft the quarterback. One of them's going to be there at 11, okay? Bo, Penix, one of them's going to be there at 11, all right? Now, in any crazy scenario where they roll with Sam Darnold, which is going to all but secure his career completely over because if they roll with Sam Darnold, he, Justin Jefferson forcing his way out of there in training camp, okay? <laughs> and, and I don't want to see it because I already know what time it is because we're going to we get that notification. The Buffalo Bills have traded for Justin Jefferson. And I ain't got time for the drama, okay? So listen. Let's get this out of the universe um, because Justin Jefferson ain't playing under no Sam Darnold. Let's get that straight now. He'd rather come with a, a fresh rookie that gives hope at least. But he's not playing under Sam Darnold, all right? They are not rolling with Sam Darnold. But if they do, I think it's one of the dumbest decisions they can make if one of those guys are available at 11, Bow or Penix. You got to start. You got to get grabbed one of those guys. These, I mean, this class isn't, this isn't a scrub class, to be honest with you, at the quarterback position. I know we always talk about the top two or three guys, but technically, man, all five of these guys got an opportunity to be really good in this league. Will all five of them be? Conventional wisdom tells you no. You know, I mean, one of them might only work out. None of them may work out. We don't know. But at least these guys coming in with some skill sets and intangibles that, honestly, man, we probably ain't seen in in quite some time. This is going to be a really good class, in my opinion. The Vikings better take them one of these guys. And it's not like they don't have the assets to move up to 11 in the top seven. They have it sitting right there. So... I can't, they, they, they're being fools to wait to next year. You don't know what the circumstance is going to be next year. You know, There's a whole new group of people who have to go in the quarterback game next year, including the Jets. The Jets, if they don't get somebody to start developing behind Rodgers, they're going to get somebody next year as a priority behind Rodgers. So, I mean, there's too many teams. It's not going to be that year. much of a priority, though, you know, because when you're drafting at the 32nd overall pick next year, you know, coming off being hang- hung over from a parade, you know, it's less urgency. You know what I mean? Richie, we, we all decided we weren't going to lie to these people on the huddle, bro. So come on. Let's not do what do you mean? That's the, I, I ain't say a word of a lie. Drafted number 32, Richie. Y'all ain't, yeah, y'all drafted number 32 when you trade with the Dolphins. We'll trade, we'll, 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 hey, we'll, we'll give you the 32nd pick. All right. that that it's not lying. That's called manifestation, baby. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, Thank you guys all, for tuning in to another to episode of The Huddle. No one's listening to what TD's got to say anymore about my Jets. I'm sick and tired of the hate. I love you guys. Thank you all for tuning in. Episode number 35. This was a record-breaking show. If you did not hit the like button already, please consider doing it. If you already hit the like button, we appreciate that big time. Bet US TV is live here on The Huddle, Monday through Friday. Let's freaking go. Dan. What are you going to do tonight, baby? We got the AFC East Roundtable tonight. Us three plus Colby from Patriots Global. Even more talk about this trade tonight. Dan, you ready for that? Oh, yes, sir. Most definitely. Like I said, acceptance, my friend. I'm just moving forward. TD, you ready for the AFC East Roundtable tonight? Or you, did you save some something for it? Or did, oh, did you get pl- all out? I got plenty more. I got plenty more. <laughs> we we going to get back on this running back debate, too. So, all right. So get ready. Guys, we got even more of a jam-packed show tonight on the AFC's Roundtable. We'll see you guys then. Shout out to the chat. We love you all. See you tonight and tomorrow on the huddle.
Just listen here, fools. There's no point in me asking if you enjoyed the content. Who doesn't enjoy three grown men yelling at each other for an hour about your favorite sport Monday through Friday? So you might as well go ahead and subscribe to this channel and turn on that notification bell so you never miss an episode. And in case that you have a hankering for some more fiery hot sports content, simply go over to BetUS TV where you will notice an entire catalog of shows that are just as engaging as this one. We'll see you next time.